As a 15 year old, the one thing that frightens me more than anything is the future. My dad once told me that what you can't contain will destroy you. I asked him for an example. I'll give you an example. Technology. We can't contain it. It will eventually destroy us. Now I'm not saying that technology doesn't have its good points, but in a race, bad technology will leave mankind's good intentions in the dust. It will destroy us. Why? You don't believe me? Anytime you think that computers are involved, ultimately artificial intelligence is or will be playing a role. But I think it's a very serious worry. What will happen as AI gets better and better? When somebody develops a good AI program, it doesn't just replace one worker, it might replace millions of workers. What do you want to do with your life? Heard that one before? Yeah, me too. Well, I want to make movies. My dad was a script reader. I grew up around piles of screenplays. While other kids my age were reading T magazines, I was reading Roger Ebert movie reviews. I go to movies, I read movies, I analyze movies. But how could I become a filmmaker if what my dad told me is true? That technology is going to destroy us. So I did some investigating. Computers could destroy us. I hope that they won't. There is some risk. I don't know how to put a number on it. And the problem is nobody knows how to put a number on it. The trouble is if, if they do start to challenge us, we, we may not be equipped to, to fight back. Hey, Dad, how's your leg? Fine. How's your investigation going? It's all right. All right. Did you research computer-generated art yet? Why? Well, if you're asking why, then we should take a trip to the museum. That's why. I want to show you something. These paintings here. People come from all over the world to see these. Yeah, they're good. Computer painted these. What are you talking about? That's impossible. You believe what you want to believe. The computer that made these was so good that they're real to everybody. So tell me, who's the master? The computer or the human? David Cope is a music professor who created this computer program named Emily Howell. And what Emily does is she creates amazing original music. I've got to interview this professor. Most people fear the idea that, you know, computers can be creative and can think and maybe even someday have a, a separate consciousness from ourselves. We're capable, I think, of everything. And certainly being able to program uh, a tool like a computer into behaving creatively, let's say. Being able to do that is a very powerful thing and makes us all that much more creative. In other words, what most people think is, is a detraction from human abilities is actually a plus, in my view. It may eventually um, come down to, you can have, say, computer-generated music that perfectly fits your mood and, and takes you in the direction that you want. And some people will choose that, and a few people will say, well, I like this old stuff, it was on vinyl. You know, I still want to listen to the Beatles. Narrative Science created a computer program that takes sports data and in seconds turns into a full-blown sports article so real that you'd think a human wrote it. What's next, books and screenplays? You know, things work in cycles. I mean, if CGI actually produces a situation that's so good that there's nothing but CGI out there, then there'll be somebody who'll actually produce a new film with an actual person in it, and we'll say, oh my God, we had no idea that there could actually be people on the screen, and that would take over. Hey Dad, what do you think about CGI? It's gonna turn Hollywood into a ghost town. One day you're gonna read in the obituaries, Hollywood, death by digital. It's gonna happen. What can she do that you can't do? She does things that I would never do. For example, she'll produce a little snippet of music and I will be, uh, I would say, oh my God, I'd never do that. Where did that come from? So I'm going to, in fact, um, incorporate it in her next work in some way, or she will, or I'll encourage her to. There's also a sense that, that um, the speed at which she's able to work being a, uh, a computational program is also uh, an incredible advantage over me. I might have come to the solution she comes to, you know, if I had three or four lifetime, but she comes to it in a matter of seconds, and that's great.
I think I'll crash just for myself with God, peace on a curious sound, for myself in my heart, and life is weeping from a bleeding heart of boughs bending, such paths of them, of boughs bending, such paths of breeze, knows we've been there. Whoa. I read an article about a mother who sold her baby to buy a cell phone. I can't use it, it's an isolated incident. Sold her baby, bought a phone! It's an isolated incident. You need to show addiction to technology. What don't you understand? I can't use it. I like the movie Her. I thought that it did portray realistically some of where things are going to go. But over the next 50 to 100 years, I don't see any principal reason to think that machines won't get a lot more sophisticated in terms of their ability to interact. Part of the premise of the movie is that people are going to do that to fight loneliness. Hey T, if a man does marry his operating system, Will the computer's maintenance costs be covered under Obamacare? In more important news, a man in China sold his kidney to buy a cell phone. Oh, uh, isolated incident? No, not anymore. It all makes sense now. Oh, now you're catching on. There are ways in which I think machines might be dehumanizing us, in which people do spend too much time with their computers without having real interaction, but it's not, it's not a simple matter. I love Emily Howell's music. All the background music you've been listening to was created by Emily, but I'm afraid that we'll become so discouraged by competing with AI that we'll stop creating and leave it to the computers to do it for us. What's going to happen to my film career? Motion pictures have given us the impression that these programs are, are separate from us, but they're not. They're part of us. After all, remember the DNA, that core of what we are, is an algorithm. Breathing is an algorithm. Heart beating is an algorithm. Our brain working. I am a virtual algorithm, and so are you. And all we're doing is extending our algorithms to a broader range of things. We're making it available to our computational systems, and God knows where other kind of systems will happen in the future. All of this is, is just wonderful. Let me break it down. Technology has been steadily putting people out of work, and we do nothing about it. And now it's aiming for the very heart of mankind, the arts. If you've come to realize that you use technology not because you want to, but because you have no choice but to, then ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Generation Hollow. My journey has made me realize that the arts are so much more important than my dream of becoming a filmmaker. The human artist inspires with the stroke of a brush, a lyric, with the right lighting. They make us see things in a way we've never seen them before. Art is honesty. Art is passion. It's our only defense against all the craziness in the world. Hurricanes, hunger, disease. Artists are always the first to come to our rescue, not machines. It's time we take their backs. Today, more than ever, we cannot afford to lose the human touch. Vincent Van Gogh said, I am seeking. I am striving. I am in it with all my heart. And so am I. More than machinery. We need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than machinery, we need humanity.